All right, welcome to my first video on uh, Office 365. Uh, I have a new book coming out, which is what part of this is uh, supporting, called Creating Business Applications with Office 365 Techniques in SharePoint, Power Apps, Power BI, and more. So you can find it on Amazon, pre-order it at the time of this one, and it's published by APRES, and you can see it's got this uh, ISBN number. So uh, check that out. In this first video, it won't take very long. I just want to show some of the techniques I cover in that book are uh, involve needing a content editor to usually to get some jQuery and JavaScript, some style sheets into SharePoint. And also some of the applications use InfoPath. Now I'm a huge fan of the new Power Apps, which we can see right there coming out, but InfoPath has some usefulness too. So uh, I wanted to show how to enable that. So in this video, we're really just going to look on how do we set up our Office 365 SharePoint to allow content editors and to uh, allow InfoPath. So what we do, we're in Office 365, and the first thing we want to do is go into Admin here. And we get all these different choices. Um, what we want to do is click the dots and go down to admin centers and then go to SharePoint. And we can kind of get some idea that these are older features that they're not really pushing right now. And we'll see that in a minute because we have to go to classic features like that. And then we got to go to more classic features. Okay. And so here's info path that comes in first so let's do that and we say open and it gives us a new tab and this the big key is this guy right here allow users to browser enable uh, form templates and we want to do this one too render form templates that are browser enabled by users and then we don't need the rest of that. So we just, you, these are already checked. But if they're not, now it can take up to 24 hours until it all works. Uh, and I'll, we'll do a sample of that in a minute. So we hit OK. And it saves that. Like I said, it's actually already there. So we'll keep going back. But the other one I like to just search. So I'm just going to search for script. No, which doesn't. Fine, let me go back again. Maybe it was on that first page. Let's go classic features, script, more classic features. As well. All right, let me pause the video for a minute and we'll see if I can figure out what it is, where it is, because I've lost it at the moment. So back in a second. All right, well, I'm back. So it's close, but I didn't quite have it. So we're on classic features. We need to go back to settings here. And then we have some of the settings here, but then we need to go to classic settings page. And that gives us again in a new tab. This one's what I'm looking for. So again, I'll search for script. And I come in here and I want allow users to run custom script on personal sites and allow users to run custom script on self-service created sites. So those are the things that we need. Again, it can take some time, up to 24 hours to get done. So let's go look real quick for in this video what we can do, how we know if it's working really. So um, let's go back here. Just go back to get to the main office. So let's open up SharePoint. And I'll just pick one of our, my sites here. So I'll just go to collaboration. So the first thing to know is the let's let's talk about the custom script first. So we can't put those into these modern pages like this. So if we come in and we actually say uh, we can't edit the page there, but if we, if we get exact oh if we click edit here, we don't really have a spot. You know we can add new things here. But we don't, well, that's a new section, but we can add like a new, there we go, a new item. But we don't get script editor uh, there or content editor. So we just get the newest one. Now we can do a code snippet, which can help us a little bit. But I usually like to put the files in a, diff, in a, a different uh, file, put it in document library, and then load up to that. So what you want to do, and the same thing would happen if we said, 
add a page here, but we have a little trick. We can go to site contents and we'll leave this because we don't care about the, the change. And then we go to site pages. And then when we go to new, we just say new wiki page, which is just means it's a classic page. So you would get kind of the old style one. So I'm just call it script test like that. And then we get the, the, the ribbon that we want, insert web part. And then what we're looking for, we go to media and content. And then we're looking for content editor, we're looking for script editor. So if we added one there, and we got lots of examples, I'll do different videos on that. But the gist of it is, is you can come in here and say edit web part. And then link to a file here so we'll give some more videos of that and i cover that in a book quite a bit you can link in have some jquery javascript cascading style sheets that kind of thing all right let's go look at the info path real quick and easiest to do on the info path is we'll just i'll be on my other screen but i'll launch info path designer and we'll just build one in this thing. And, and basically what happens is if InfoPass not enabled, when we come to publish it, it won't allow us to do it. So let's just do a real quick one. We'll just call this test form. Now when it comes time to, to edit, uh, to customize uh, list, I recommend doing uh, the, the new Power Apps if you can. Uh, if it has the features you want and so forth, uh, but uh, a form library is still kind of nice and that's what we'll build here. So let's go ahead and just, I'm going to add a, um, come over here and we'll just add like current date. And uh, when we put that in, we'll put a default thing in there and then I'm going to add in, I'm going to insert, let's just put a something like that in there. Go ahead and add that in. And I'll do properties. And I can put a default value. We'll just put today in there, like that. Just show off a little bit. Okay. And then. I'm going to add in a, uh, a person. So we'll just do that. Oh, and let me undo. That's right. Well, I didn't really want it in there, but we can drag it on this one instead. Nah, I didn't want that either. Now nah, let's delete this whole thing. We can just do it again. Let's get rid of the whole group. There we go. Delete. There we go. Let's try it again. It's a little cleaner that way. There we go. And I'll just rename this to current user. Bad. Oh, yeah, it doesn't want a space. And just to fill out our form, we'll do a, uh, and I'll just say user here. And we'll add one more and we'll just put some notes. And I'll leave it as text. And then when I drag that on, we'll uh, go in here and we can make it uh, multi-line like that. We can make it a little bigger. There we go. All right, so we'll save that. And uh, I'll just put it right here for now because I don't want to change things. So we'll just say test form. And now what we want to do is we want to publish it to SharePoint. So we're going to go to a SharePoint server and this is where I'll go back to our site and we just want the location of the site itself. So we'll put that in there. And 
I'll make it a form library. We want to be doing it in the browser. So we take the defaults there and we can create a new one. So we'll just call it test forms like that. And then we can put in what do we want to copy. So we'll just add the current date. These are columns that we get to put in there. And it used to be, I didn't realize you could edit that. And it always says display name. So I'm just going to call it user like that. And it has the first here because technically that could be a repeating list. But in our case, it's only got one. And then we'll put the notes in like that. So what's nice is it'll keep the form, but it'll also copy that data from InfoPath into our list so we can, or into our form library so that we can export that to Excel and that kind of thing. So we'll publish this over. And again, if we hadn't enabled InfoPath, then this all would have failed and would have a message. So let's do it so we can see. Now, one thing that's a problem here is this save and save as. We don't want that. And so we'll close. But we have to publish it first. That's why it's... So we'll just close this whole thing. That's why we uh, have to fix it, but we have to publish it first before we can do that. So what we do now is we go over to data and we're gonna save it to the SharePoint library. So again, what's actually best I like to do, I hate having typos and stuff. So let's go in here and let's go to site contents. I can leave that alone. You see we go right to the library. So uh, rather than us having to type it in, I like to have that whole thing. And that'll get us there for testing too. So we're going to go right there like that. And then we don't want to just call it form. What I like to do is come in and we'll insert concat function. And we want this to be unique. So normally I'll do like the person's name. And then depending on if they could do you know, I can use the today function or not. I need a date because I, I don't, if they go in tomorrow, I don't want to have it make a new form. But we'll assume that they're not going to do more than one per day in this example. So we'll just uh, put whatever they put in for the date. So we can get more elaborate, but that'll be good enough for an example just to test it. And we'll allow them to overwrite so that if they go in and edit the form it'll save their changes so we save that and then we come back and go to our form options and now we get the submit option this would have been grayed out before and we uncheck the save so we just submit it back to the library and then we'll need to publish again so again uh, this is more just testing it, but we have to have enough of a form to test to make sure everything's working in InfoPath. All right, so almost done. Let's go back here and we hit new form. Notice we've got the submit button. We've got, that was our, our date. That's the date that I'm doing that because I put today as the default value. I'll search for myself. I've got some other family members in there for testing. And I'll say these are some notes. And when I submit, should go back to there. There's that date. If I click it again, it'll open it up to edit. So everything's how we want it. And I'm sure we want to close it. And again, we can export this because we've got our data, the user, and the notes, and so forth. So that's it for this first video. I hope you enjoyed it. Come subscribe to my channel, and uh, we'll be doing lots in Power Apps, Power BI, SharePoint, Flow, those kinds of things. So I uh, look forward to seeing you back. Thank you.